Good morning and uh, welcome to Morning Prayer from Galmington. I know it's been ages, really. Um, it feels like ages since we've kind of uh, said morning or evening prayer together and I think that's probably is is my fault. I had yesterday off, but I think probably it's that kind of that kind of thing where um, honestly there are aspects of lockdown which are are incredibly uh, tiring and and some of the repetition is really good, but some of the uh, repetition uh, can be quite exhausting at times, I guess. Um, and I don't think that's just for me. I'm saying it as a general general thing you know we get into the habit of what we're doing um at home or uh new patterns of working or things like that and it's it I don't think we really realize uh how how kind of exhausting it can be um how those new patterns to our day and those changes uh, are um are in some ways are good for us but they take some getting used to I know that one of the things that I'm noticing um for a number of people um not just me is that I could kind of like sleep a lot longer in the morning um and that I will be awake and happy to be working a lot later in the evening um I've got uh three children um two are in year five one's in year six year six is going to go back to school potentially on the first of June um one of the things I've noticed is that the children have grown hugely, massively in the past few months. Um, and and I wonder whether they normally grow that amount during the kind of like early spring time or um, whether actually being at home, um, being rested, not stressing about some of the things we have quite a long uh, journey to make each day to and from school, um, but not stressing about all of that, maybe it, it kind of encourages that growth in the children so like the the height's just gone boom like this um and I, you know one of the things that I was thinking the other day is actually um you know there's all these jokes aren't there on on Facebook and things about when we all see each other um the first thing we're going to say to one another is hey you look well haven't you lost weight um and actually for a number of people possibly that kind of that idea that they've put some weight on is yes it's about inactivity to a degree but there's a number of people trying to work out a little bit in their homes and things but some of that is purely to do with less mental stress and things like that so um actually let's kind of um yeah be 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 aware that actually lockdown's tiring and our bodies are doing lots of different things and our minds are doing lots of different things too and I am wittering, and we are going to say some morning prayer in a moment. Um, just uh, in case Liz is, is watching, um, this clerical shirt, um, this is one that was made by Helen, who lives down in Alaford. Um, and it was my Christmas shirt uh, a number of years ago, even though it's short sleeved. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's been lots of other ramifications with the little deers on a red background, but um, yeah. So we'll. Um, I think I'm really talking nuts now because because that made no sense whatsoever. So I'm just gonna stop talking and um, yeah, crack on with morning prayer. It's definitely better to do that. Anyway, it's lovely to have you here if you are here. Um, and we're going to follow the Church of England's morning prayer, Thursday the 21st of May 2020, um, and it is Ascension Day, um, and so in a way, really a good day to get back on air. <laughs> oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your throne has been established from old. You are from everlasting. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. To you be glory and praise forever. From the darkness of death, you have raised your Christ to the right hand of your majesty on high. The pioneer of our faith, his passion accomplished, has opened for us the way to heaven and sends us to the promised spirit. May we be ready to follow the way and so be brought to the glory of his presence. Where songs of triumph 
signed forever. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. So we rejoice at the gift of your new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Our psalm together is 110 um, and we'll use the refrain today. So when we get to a little red R on our sheet, we say the refrain, the Lord is king and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. May the Lord stretch forth the scepter of your power. Rule from Zion in the midst of your enemies. Noble are you on this day from your birth, on the holy mountain from the womb of the dawn. The dew of your new birth is upon you. The Lord is king and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord has sworn and will not react. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The king at your right hand, O Lord, shall smite down kings in the day of wrath. The Lord is king and has put on glorious apparel. In all his majesty, he shall judge among the nations, smiting heads over all the wide earth. He shall drink from the brook beside the way. Therefore shall he lift high his head. The Lord is king and has put on glorious apparel. Lord Jesus, divine son and eternal priest, inspire us with confidence of your final conquest of evil and grant that daily on our way we may drink from the brook of your eternal life and so find courage against all adversities for your mercy's sake. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament readings from Isaiah. Really familiar words. Isaiah 52, 7 to 15. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your senators lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, ye ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of it, purifying yourselves, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. For you shall not go in haste and you shall not go in flight. For the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high, just as there were many who were astonished at him. So marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. See what the Lord has done and exalt him in the sight of the living. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord who lives forever, whose reign endures throughout all ages. Declare God's praise before the nations, you who are the children of Israel. For if our God had scattered you among them, there too he has shown you his greatness. Exalt him in the sight of the living because he is our Lord and God and Father forever. Through mercy, that though, though God punishes you for your wickedness, mercy will be shown to you all. God will gather you from every nation, from wherever you have been scattered. When you turn to the Lord with all your heart and soul, God will hide, will hide his face from you no more. See what the Lord has done for you, 
and give thanks with a loud voice. Praise the Lord of righteousness and exalt the King of ages. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. See what the Lord has done and exalt him in the sight of the living. Hallelujah. New Testament reading comes from Hebrews um, and it's um, 11 to 25 and 26 to 28. Now, if perfection had been attainable through the Levitical priesthood, for the people received the law under this priesthood, what further need would there have been to speak of another priest arising according to the order of Melchizedek? rather than one according to the order of Aaron. For when there is a change in the priesthood, there is necessarily a change in the law as well. Now the one of whom these things are spoken belong to another tribe from which no one has ever served at the altar. For there is evident that our Lord was descendant from Judah, and in connection with that tribe Moses said nothing about priests. It is even more obvious that when another priest arises resembling Melchizedek, one who has become a priest not through legal requirement concerning physical descent, but through the power of an indestructible life, for it is attested of him, you are priests forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. There is on the one hand the abrogation of an earlier commandment because it was weak and ineffectual but the law made nothing perfect. There is, on the other hand, the introduction of a better hope through which we approach God. This was confirmed with an oath. For others who became priests took their office without an oath. But this one became a priest with an oath because of the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Accordingly, Jesus has also become a guarantee of a better covenant. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach through God, God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once when he offered himself for the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of oath, subject to weakness, but the word of oath, which came later than the prophets, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. So in short, Jesus, who uh, was there at the beginning of all creation, all time, was as part of Trinity, was born for us, lived a life to teach us and to demonstrate God at work within the world, died for us, rose again uh, as one who had conquered death, but as an assurance uh, of the resurrection, and then ascended into heaven and his job didn't stop there he didn't get to heaven and that was the the end of it really he was always high priest holy blameless undefiled separated from sinners and above the heavens and what he does is he sits there or stands there or walks there and talks with God who is father and intercedes for his people I don't know how that works, you know. I mean, does he have to constantly remind Father as a, as a, that aspect of God that um, 
that he dyed brass in. I don't think so. Maybe it's that that presence uh, of Jesus who descended from heaven for a time, reascended. Uh, that that kind of assures us that 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 sacrifice was made. I like the idea that probably it's most evident on Ascension Day that um, God as Trinity has an aspect and attribute that is wholly rooting and advocating for us in our humanity. We say the response read together, sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. God has gone up with a merry noise. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet, tell out his salvation from day to day. He has led captivity captive and given gifts to all his people. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Benedictus today begins and ends with um, an Ascension Day refrain. I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and has set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. The new child should be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I'm ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Alleluia. Going to pray now and I'm just hoping I can find something. think you love it when you pick up a book and you're kind of sure that there's something in it you know what we're going to use uh, some of our prayers for Easter can you use um, prayers for Easter and they are Uh, come alive but I think these really speak to us at Ascension Day as well from Dorothy McRae McMahon and I'm sure that's Martha just coming in to um yeah shall I be out in a minute I'll come and help you in a minute okay you can come in if you want So we turn to our intercessions. So Lord Jesus Christ, would you make real your risen life amongst us? Stretch it out across the heavens like the stars of light, which show us where your truth might lie, in the dark places of suffering. The people pray for these places. We pray Our Lord, for those parts of the world um, 
stricken by coronavirus, but also uh, those parts of the world where people are dealing with other aspects of, of natural disasters. For tornadoes, for the annual dust storms. People living with the presence of, of um, tectonic events. Lord, we pray for all peoples and all organisations that are are trying to stay safe but are needing to be in close proximity. Praying particularly for refugees or of politics of, of war, of discrimination of natural disaster. For those who don't choose where they live, let alone their proximity to others. Lord Jesus, would you intercede for them? Warm our struggling world, O Christ, where hearts lie cold in calculated self-interest showing your sparks of compassion and the flames of justice into the ashes of unlikely places. Father, we pray for some of the political decisions that we hear are being made in, in our country and, and other countries that seem to be going below the radar because COVID-19 is is all that we see and all that we hear on our screens. Father, we ask that, um, um, that our global governments and our global oppositions would be able to speak out concerning uh, things that are being passed and happening. Particularly, we pray for uh, new immigration uh, policies that are being tabled um, in the UK that would marginalise some of those key workers in our country who have come from other lands, those who are on below real living wages, those who are uh, working on their on the front line. Show to those who are ill or wounded by life your outstretched wounded hands, Lord Jesus Christ, that they might believe and know that you care and accompany them every day of their lives. Pour down your love like fruitful rain over dry places of our life so that the hidden seeds of small ideas may open in new greeting and bring forth flowers of transforming hope. Continue, Lord God, to uh, enable us to work together in communities um, for the building of a community of love and of care. Lord, may uh, people of faith remember that this is a building of your kingdom on earth. Embrace your church, O oh God, so that we may know your life-giving love so profoundly that our celebration flows over and covers the groaning of creation with the wonder of your abundance. 
help us, Lord God, at this time to uh, see you and uh, speak of you and uh, make visible your love in the world around us. For Jesus has died. He has risen. He will come again. He reigns with you at your right hand. Amen. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, has ascended into heaven, so we in heart and mind may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So our evening prayer today will have more of a focus on Ascension Day. Um, I hope you can join us for that at 6.30. Uh, but otherwise, have a good day and speak soon. Bye. <laughs>